So hello for all the people who just joined in here. Uh, welcome to the People of Color and Tech panel. I'm Grace Anglu, the host. And uh, yeah. So I'm Grace Anglu. I'm a computer applications and software engineering in DCU. I'm also the PRO of Redbrick and was a volunteer for System 2020, which a lot of people might have seen me because I won the switch last year. Uh, and a fun fact about me is I participated in the Young Scott course in Glasgow in Scotland, where we had the problem of air pollution and we were given a bunch of technological resources to solve it. So I'm going to let Vicky now introduce herself. Vicky? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm Vicky uh, Tumili. I'm, uh, I have many hats on, but uh, I suppose um, I'm a tech event organizer, which is pretty much is virtual nowadays. Um, I'm a coder, well, now mostly as a hobbyist. Um, so uh, whenever I find time between my volunteering stuff and between my day job, um, I do a bit of code. I also advocate diversity in tech and uh, and my day job is actually a maker advocate, um, which so I promote uh, maker culture and um, uh, connect connect up with the maker community. So a lot of the stuff is to do with community from my end, from both uh, technology and maker and everything, really. Um, I suppose, um, uh, do you want me to talk about other stuff I want to do, or that's okay with that's okay for now, Grace. All right, yeah, that's all right for now. Yeah, so we'll go to Oluchi. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. So my name is Oluchi Anibuike. I'm a software engineer at Fidelity Investments. I've been working there for just over a year now. Um, I work on the fixed income team, so um, that's working with fixed income products such as bonds. Um, so I'm delivering my primary deliverables on an application, both external and internal facing, called Bond Beacon. Um, I went to NUI Galway for my undergraduate degree, and um, I was studying computer science there. So um, as part of that, I had a lot of experience, um, I suppose, organizing internal events within the university. One of those would have been um, an event called Sign Ups Galway that ran from 2015 to when I left in 2019, um, which would be kind of similar to system, except with, um, I suppose it was in person at the time and we have more workshops, but we did have reps from companies such as Google, Eric, Ericsson, Microsoft, and the big names that you hear in Dublin and in Galway. Um, yeah, I think Grace found my fun fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> As part of my role, uh, I was recently featured in Silicon Republic article speaking about my experience as a graduate engineer and speaking about the LEAP graduate program um, within our company. So that's all for me. Yep, now we'll move on to Lays. Hello, uh, can anyone, everyone hear me? Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, hello everyone, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you very much for the invite. Uh, so I'm um, Laís Carvalho. Uh, I work as a developer advocate uh, for Open Teams. Uh, I used to work uh, for Quantum Black, where I was a developer advocate for data science and machine learning framework application. Uh, I'm a student. I'm still in college. I'm doing my final year um, in IT. Uh, I started with the whole community uh, with Python, uh, with Vicky, there's here in the panel with us today. <laughs> uh, and she was the one that told me that Python Island uh, might be looking for people. So I went to Python Island and now I've been in Python Island for a little bit more than a year now. Uh, and I'm a board member, <laughs> yes. So I vote, I have voting rights. <laughs> and I'm also part of the Euro Python organization for last year and for this year as well, we just started. And actually we're looking for volunteers. If anyone would like to volunteer, we're looking uh, for people and you don't need to uh, know how to code. Um, we're looking for people who know to, how to do anything. Um, yes, so then uh, last December, we, um, I was part of the organization for Pyjamas. There is a Python conference where you present wearing pajamas. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. And there was also a little bit of PyDataDoubling um, hosting as well. 
Uh, yes, the fun fact about me, I was part of the group uh, back in Brazil. I'm originally from Brazil. I've been living in Dublin for around five years. Uh, and back in Brazil, I used to be part of the team to, uh, that did um, subtitles, the Portuguese subtitles for the first season of Game of Thrones. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Thank you. And then finally, we have Evelyn. All right, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Evelyn Lemire. I'm a, I'm a software engineer. Um, they prefer to be called a full stack developer. And um, I'm also an educationist, uh, technology consultant, and uh, a woman in tech evangelist. Basically, what I what that means is that I spend hundreds of hours of my time mentoring and encouraging young girls to to see the beauty in using technology to solve everyday problems and also encouraging them to study technology related subjects in college or take up technology related role basically i also liaise with companies to see how they can offer opportunities for people of color to get started in the tech world and yeah so um that's about me and also i'm still in college as well i am um, a phd candidate in trinity college uh, my research is focused on um, latency reduction in IoT. I think in a nutshell, that's me. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. So uh, we're going to get on with the questions now. If any of the audience has any questions, we'll try to answer them at the end if we have time. So our first question is, what challenges have you faced as a woman and a woman of color in the tech industry? So anybody can take the stage first and answer it. Okay, I can go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, basically, um, one thing I noticed um, for women of color is that they lack mentorship. As a matter of fact, that is why I set up a non-for-profit organization called Phase Innovate to mentor women um, in this space. And so they lack mentorship. They struggle to find mentors um, that have dealt with unique challenges that, that come their way. So, um, um, so, so that would be one thing. Another one will be uh, most of the times you find yourself having to prove uh, your credentials. You know, um, I remember when I was in college, I was once upon a time in, in, in UCD and the likes there. Um, and most of the times I'll be the only woman in the class. Um, I have younger boys with me and, um, I'll, you see, when at times when they even pair you up with them, it will seem like, oh, maybe this does not have anything to offer. Do you get it? Even up to the lecturers until they get to know you better. I remember once upon a time when I had to present one of the applications that I developed. You know, um, the lecturer kept asking me, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you do this? And he did not ask the boys. You know, so I, I found that so um, annoying. But at the same time, um, I just kept my calm, you know, until I, until I completed the presentation. But that's that's what most women face in general, having to um, to prove their credentials from time to time in the tech space. Yeah. Then one of the stuff I will also talk about will be um, black women or people of color being an outsiders in a um, network event, you know, um, I, I have, I know we, this is virtual now, but in the past we used to go do networking and, and the likes, you know, you have most of the time you see yourself, you're probably the only person there and all that, you know, and you feel, you feel not welcome at times, you know, as a matter of fact, there was one occasion that I will never forget. And um, after the whole, it was a women's event after the whole event, um, the person that was meant to be the main mentor of my cohort um, was shaking hands with people. And when he got to my turn, she shook hands with me and she impulsively just withdrew. Like, you know, she didn't know that she, you know, she could see as if she cleaned her hands as if she touched a monkey. Do you know what I mean? Because um, obviously maybe she's not met with a black person before she was, you know, seeing that for the first time, you know, experiencing that for the first time. But the other people there saw it, they noticed it, you know. So so those are the kind of things that um, people of color will face from time to time. And it, it has um, a huge effect, you know, um, psychologically, you know. It, it takes somebody to be strong to be able to go back to that kind of place again. 
I guess I'll leave the, the rest for the rest of the panel to continue it. Yeah, thank you. I suppose uh, I can jump in here if it's okay. Yeah. Um, so I kind of um, feel the same in college. Uh, what Evelyn went through were uh, mostly mostly um, males in the class. Um, so uh, I tend to, I think, I didn't know how to, if should I ask for help or not? When not if I, um, if, the, the, if my future self came back to me, I would say, go ask for help if there's any questions. Because I feel if I ask anyone in a class for help, I feel like they're a knight in shining armor coming to rescue me because I'm, you know, I'm a girl or something like that. For some reason that was in my head. Um, and and that was, it made me, made it harder for me to work, um, to, to go, to, to do my kind of um, projects and um, work on, work on kind of uh, various things uh, during college. And that kind of, um, brought that with me as I entered into um, my job. You know, I found it hard to ask for help. I, I wanted to be the one that show I can do this. I do it myself. I know there's points where you know you don't, you don't want to be handheld and you can learn a lot by yourself. But there's certain points when you do need the help and you don't see the difference between wanting help and wanting to see something by yourself. And I, I, I felt that was a kind of a negative thing that I brought from college with me, where I couldn't see myself being a man, being a, a minority in the, in the class and feeling that I have to be the strong one I feel I didn't even know I was representing you know myself to be the strong one I think I was just scared that they see me as uh weak or something like that because I was a girl and they didn't talk to me the same as they do with the rest of the peers um and then the uh, same thing with events I suppose um I want to see people like myself for quite a while I've been in, in the I've been uh, going to events for quite a long time. Um, like I, uh, so for Python Ireland, uh, I was lucky enough to be in the Python community from right from the from the kind of get go here in Ireland. Uh, so back in the early two thousands, so two thousand five when I start running it, but it was mainly again there's no one like myself. And if there was one girl that came to a meetup that month, I was so excited I would just gravitate towards her. And just chat <laughs> and then ignoring everyone else and then got, you know but then that person never come, came back again and i just don't understand why and i tried to convince my female colleagues to go along and they don't go along to these events it was really hard and i just stopped trying and i just said it is what it is which is probably not <laughs> for for a while and then by the time it hit 2012 i start asking the questions again when i started to run like uh, the Python Iron Conference, uh, I wanted to get more people to go to. So, okay, they're not going to these monthly events. What if they want? What if I can get them to go to bigger conferences? And why they're not turning up? Um, and um, again, it's I. I was just I just was yearning for that talk, seeing someone like myself. Even I don't get to talk to them at that meet that that event. Just seeing someone like myself there instead of just a sea of just guys, <laughs> which is to me like I just thought it was the way it is and. Um, uh, how can I change it as one person? Um, so um, I, I think um, for me, coming in the in the community side of things, um, uh, that's uh, I try to um, engage with the, uh, with the people that attend and um, try to make them feel welcome as much as I can. And um, so so I have a smaller meetup called Pi, Pi Ladies Dublin, and uh, that's where um, uh, I met Lace and. Uh, and I wanted to keep that small at the time when it was in person. I wanted to keep. I don't, don't want it to be like 80, 90 people. I want it to be much smaller. Someone can, people can fit in the room that they can see each other. Where you walk in and you feel like you can walk up to someone and talk to each other, and you can take out your laptop and do something and ask questions and have that feeling of you know, um, of not being the only one there saying I want to see someone like myself. Um, and I don't want to feel like I'm. I don't. I feel. I don't know anything. But it's okay to ask questions. So that was my big thing throughout my, my like when from college right up to my early career was being afraid to ask for help uh, and being seen as weak, I suppose, and uh, and having that confidence, you know. And then so um, I'm hoping that all these events can help people can um, get over that little hump and do ask those questions and then, you know go and do some and actually. Uh, directing your focus on something that is what you really want to know more about that tech know about more about the what that person's doing in their job or studying in that course or whatnot so i'll leave it at there and leave it for the panel no, that's yeah um i think i could i could probably echo evelyn's point where um i i definitely had people doubting my abilities um just because of what i look like or being a woman um this was in college, 
and also like moving into the corporate space and consequently developing imposter syndrome because of, of those doubts that other people may have had about me. So then I started doubting myself. Am I really supposed to be here? Do I actually know what I'm doing? Um, this, that and the other. And um, definitely the lack of mentorship um, can definitely play a huge part. But um, I, I, saw, I sought it upon myself to seek out mentors um, to, to seek out people, whether or not they knew they were my mentor, <laughs> they, they, they were someone I looked up to, um, in college. And then when I left college within my workplace, and I'm, I'm very glad that right now the team I work with, um, our tech lead, um, is a very, very, very brilliant developer. And she just also happens to be a woman, but like a lot of things where, you know, I may have self doubt about, I just look to her and she has no doubt whatsoever. And the confidence that she portrays within the team gives me confidence as well. And definitely that representation does matter. Um, and then being a black woman in tech, um, it is oftentimes you are the only black woman in the room or in the office or at the event. Um, and it is like exciting when you do see somebody else you know, speaking. I know I saw Evelyn speaking at a talk within my own company actually about diversity and inclusion just a couple of months ago. And that was, that was great for me um, just to, to see that representation and to see someone who looked like me who lives in my locality speaking about such issues like this so um the i suppose like the main thing the cha the main challenge would be definitely people doubting my ability and then and then me doubting myself because of that all right so i will try to wrap it up but have been made um i agree with all of you yes um there is there is a lot of imposter syndrome uh, coming from challenges like being doubted, um, absolutely. But I think I think I want to end this in a little bit of like a, a, a higher mood, um, just to make um, Oluchi's just to extend a little bit on Oluchi's point on on representation. That yes, um, for me I was very lucky because uh, the first place that I went to work, my boss uh, is a was a South African woman, black woman. Uh, and she was a product manager and was my first job in tech. So it was quite, it was really good to see her doing the job that I never thought that I could be in a company like that doing, because uh, I was studying. And then when I, saw, when I switched companies, I went to a team where it's a very small team and I'm the only woman and I'm the only black person in the team. And then I'm one of, I think, two people in among 70 people. Um, I mean, one, two of us are black women, the rest of everyone else is from all over the world. But anyhow, um, it's the, the challenge of being heard is a, is a big one. Uh, you say things and people don't believe on what you're saying, they don't understand what your point is, or they pretend you, you don't really understand what you're talking about and just go on with the thought um and sorry was that oh I, I thought someone wanted to say something sorry um but yes so i think representation is a, a big challenge and it's not something that we can solve by ourselves uh we can't make sure that there's going to be a a person over there that we're going to look at and we're going to feel inspired by but we can always look for people around and try and message them and try to, as Alicia said, maybe make them a mentor without them actually knowing that they're mentoring us. Um, and yeah, that, that's me for now. All perfect points, thank you. I think we actually touched on question two, which is the workplace isn't the only place where we use tech. In your college volunteer work and generally outside of the workplace, how have you faced the lack of inclusivity? I think we touched on that in the first one, but if anybody has any extra points to add to that, that they can, they're free to do so. I want to talk about inclusive language, if that's okay. Yeah. And I think Vicky is, uh, anyone please just feel free to interrupt me or to come along with me. Uh, <laughs> because inclusive language is a big one. And I've been facing this everywhere. Like I was in the WhatsApp group in college one of these days and well, most of us, like some of us are Brazilian and there's a lot of people from all over the world. 
And most of the English is Americanized, so everyone calls everyone guys. Uh, and then I come up and say, listen, I don't really feel like you're talking to me when you use guys on your sentences. Uh, well, because I'm not a guy. <laughs> and that was horrible. Like I had people screaming and shouting and making fun and posting memes. Yes, it was. I was shocked by it. Um, but that that happened. And that happened when. And it was in college. It's a place that we should be able to have a discussion about these things. Exactly. Um, I want to know about other people. Tell me. Oh my God! I'm sorry. You you had to go through that. <laughs> it was like so recent. Um, I I think um um, I suppose um the, the big thing is uh, for me from I do a lot of community uh, kind of events and stuff was especially in the early stages when the things were no such thing as code of conduct and you're trying to introduce that and the pushback you have with some people saying well there hasn't been any problems no one's complained are you going to highlight issues that you know that people that something went wrong and no one know about knew about that like how do you handle things like that um and you say no we're doing this as you know first of all um uh, people feel a bit kind of safer going to events knowing that you are aware that things might happen and there is a safe space to go to and people that you can talk to um and especially when there's um, a representation of uh, diverse organizers on the team as well, um, because you're encouraging different types of people to 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 help out. Um, and I say it's the same like with, with teams as well. If you see a good representation, you feel uh, you know you you go in. You don't they don't have to shout and scream saying yeah we're diverse and inclusive. You, you just see it. It's just it's there. The example is there. It's. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just still shocked what you just said there, <laughs> because it just um, kind of uh, kind of slightly kind of triggered me when I tried to try to uh, um, bring in like a uh, code of conduct or bring in financial aid or something like that and support for students and uh, support for people of minority backgrounds. And uh, a lot of people just just feel like that you're doing a lot more work. Why are you doubling up on the work and stuff and you know, it's not never been a problem. No one's ever asked for it, but just because it's never happened before, it has happened. We just no one reported it. Um, no one has asked for it because people just don't go and ask. Hey, can you offer me a free ticket? Or hey, I really can't afford it. Like, people don't want to say they can't, you know, go to this because they either can't afford it or they can't afford to the travel there. Not even just going, you know, even even in the same city, they might be able to afford the ticket, you know. And um, it's it's there's a lot of kind of things but I think after the number of years people started to understand but when you when so I found it kind of shocking when I just heard you know even just saying like please don't use uh, guys uh, as part of the inclusive just the language itself and then her, for me harking back before that as well trying to introduce things to make it more inclusive and diverse to a community that has never implemented any of this before because a lot of this a lot of this has been, um, you know, um, start, starting to be implemented in the US and not much in Europe or not much in UK and Ireland. So I was trying to do something a little bit different and just um, hoping to make the community better but uh, and safer um, and get more people like myself and everyone else here to attend. Um, but yeah, there was a bit, lot of pushback and there was a lot of, uh, I think, a little bit of angst uh, for me, a lot of, uh, ang I think, frustration a lot of kind of slightly near crying as point where I had to go home and I had to like, you know, good thing I have a, a really good, you know, partner or husband who's really, you know, comforting me and I had a few friends who were able to comfort me. So it was like really hard trying to want to do the want to do the right thing, but there's pushback and you know, and uh and then you re then you start to doubt yourself saying, is this the right way to go if the community doesn't want it? Um was it sorry? Uh so Lace, what you just said there's just uh, it's still in my head. It's like I just can't believe that happened. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry about what happened, Lays. That I can't believe people could it's just, just um, terrible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But it still happens. It still mm -hmm. happens. And it's just like it's just something that we need to keep talking about because yeah we need to change it because it still happens. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to go into like workspaces and like continue to like, what's the word? Um, amplify that toxic way of like interacting with others. 
I, I, I've never really understood why there's so much pushback on something that won't really change your day-to-day -day life, but mm -hmm. will make a difference to somebody else. You know, yeah. using inclusive language, I think, is the bare minimum. Um, like, it takes nothing away from you. It doesn't harm you in any way, but it does make anybody else around you feel a lot better. So mm -hmm. um, I echo everybody's point. It's horrible that that happened to you so recently. Um, but until people realize that, um, these things, I think, I think some people, especially now that we're all virtual, people are hiding behind a keyboard a lot more, and um, they don't realize how, how, how words or actions can affect people on day to day. I bet they wouldn't have said half of those things if you were, you were in person, you know. Um, so um, it's a good and a bad thing, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's horrible that that happens to you. But people just need to realize that those kinds of things are the bare, the bare minimum, the bare minimum. But I, I would say if this kind of thing happened, uh, well, it happens all the time, to be honest with you, it, it actually um, the, makes the person develop at times imposter syndrome. And, and when you have that, I think it's best for us to start thinking of ways that we can fight that. How can you push yourself? How can you watch your body language so you don't fall victim, so you don't feel bad? Okay, shun, shun perfectionism, you know, be be self-confidence accept yourself you know at times we need to fake it to to make it you know and this is the way to actually boost our confidence at times but yeah it happens to be we have to learn how not to feel bad how not to beat ourselves over it sorry about that again imagine but like yes i absolutely agree with you evelyn um and it's emotional intelligence it's um listening to maya angelo when you're feeling low, just putting a, a poem from her and listening to it and actually feeling the words and empowering ourselves because that's absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to question three, which is how can people who are not women or people of color do better to help people of color and women to feel more included inside and outside of the workplace? Okay, I'll, I'll probably start with that as well. <clears throat> so, um, um, in workplace specifically, I, I feel if the leader do not embrace um, diversity, inclusion to be specific, it's usually very difficult for followers to to see it as a priority. So, um, uh, usually, I would like to see who is the head there. You know, so if the head can, you know, you know have our policies to encourage inclusion, I feel that will help a lot because it trickles down. And again, if the people can be open-minded, you know, and, and differences they see is actually the key to equality. If we see, if you're different, you know, it does not necessarily mean the person is, it's just a color. To be honest, we are, we are all the same. We just look different, you know. So when, when people see you as, we are together, not they are. It becomes very easy, you know, for acceptance in the workplace. You know, we should celebrate the differences, okay? Um, and also, we want to make sure we speak about inclusion from time to time. Again, that's the boils down to um, leadership. If we talk about it, we reiterate it in the workspace, then it becomes the norm. Right, so um, uh, yeah, I'll just stop there and, and let someone else take up from there. I jump in there. Uh, sure. um, I suppose um, uh, one thing would be if you, uh, if, uh, if, uh, for, to, if you see someone um, who um, like a person of color um, on the team, uh, do if you're kind of a um, it doesn't have to be you can be a peer you can be you don't you don't have to be the manager or the exec champion that person say that person had a great idea that person mentioned in the meeting just say oh that. Uh, remember in the notes, you know, before we wrap up, you know, in the, just just mention that again because it's a great idea, um, or uh, support that person to give that talk about their project or for representing the team or the company, um, because that that person could be quiet. They're the, the, you know, um, not every, every, like um, not everyone likes going to talks, but the opportunity of of being asked to give a talk, it's you know, it's you know, it's a great honor and. Um, 
Uh, it might be scary, but it's an opportunity. You never know that opens up that, that uh, the person's career to networking opportunities, to um, the, 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 the career. Um, and if you hear, and also I think the big thing is, um, you know, there's a lot of microaggressions and things. If you, if you hear any of that, call it out. Um, I know like we're going to be bystanders, but it just all adds up and it's like, it's crushing, you know, after a while, you know, and um, uh, you have that privilege to, to, to say it without getting the huge backlash, say it, just call it out and saying, no, that is not right. Um, and, and I think the other big thing is then be just, just listen, you know, if someone, someone do come up to you and they, they would want a bit of help do be, be a listener as well. You know, you don't have to be doling advice or anything. Being a good listener helps. Um, I think that's just uh, some of the things uh, that I think uh, when, when you wrote the question, that's some of the things I kind of noted down. Um, I'll let the rest of the panel jump in. I'll, I'll just piggyback off that because um, Vicky made some great points. But yeah, um, definitely, definitely um, just being there, being, being a good advocate if you aren't a part of a minority group. And um, and also Evelyn's point about leadership, I, I can see now from how leadership does play a part from the top down, even if the fact of like making mandatory, you know, workshops or mandatory training on diversity and inclusion, because some people are just, it's not, they're not, what's the word, actively trying to be malicious, they're just ignorant. And once they're given that education, they do, you know, improve upon themselves. Now, some people don't, and there's nothing we can do about that, really. But those that are just, you know, don't have the education, um, if from a leadership point of view in the workspace, you can provide that education to them during their work time, which makes it more convenient for them, you know. And um, some people after that take it upon themselves to delve deeper and see into like, what, what are microaggressions, you know? Because we as people of color, we're, we're very aware of what those are, but for someone who may have never experienced it, they're just like, oh, I didn't realize that that was a microaggression. Um, and I think it's been said a lot the past, in 2020 and probably the past two years, but like just educating yourselves on what others may be going through and to have empathy for other people. Um, is definitely very important. I would also say that like um, um, the software engineering, like the tech industry as a whole made an active effort to kind of increase the number of women in tech roles. And I, I feel like they've kind of succeeded in that. Um, I see a lot more women than I think would have been 10 years ago in teams. And there's kind of a 50, 50 split any, anyway within my company within how teams are doled out and not just like HR personnel or traditional roles that you may have found women in, but also software engineers, tech leads, architects. Um, so they, they were able to do that what, about 10 years ago when that first came in. So now it's to go the extra mile and then, uh, apart from just including women, to include people from different countries, from different perspectives, from different walks of life, because um, like Evelyn said, like diversity does bring in, you know, profit. You know, if you speak the language of business, like it does bring in profit, it does bring in creative ideas, innovation. So um, that's definitely, definitely important. And then um, to attend company workshops, um, if you if you want to learn more, to attend personal workshops, to read a book, Maya Angelou is a great resource. Um, so is Tanahasi Coates and James Baldwin. Like they're all great resources, and we also have great British resources, but I cannot. Come, they can't come to mind right now of kind of the European experience of being a person of color because um, everything tends to be quite Americanized. Um, and then on the day to day, like Vicky said, be kind, listen, and just be aware of your words and actions. Like we all learn that when we're kids. I think somewhere along the way, people forget that. And um, so just to go back to basics when it comes to that. Uh, say anything on that well i think we have covered your people covered everything <laughs> um but uh well just to reiterate then yes so i think learn um if you're interested and even if you're not interested there is a little bit of knowledge that every human should have about how to be a decent human uh because it's not asking for much it's just be respectful mm -hmm. um and listen because we loads of times when things are not okay for us we're trying to tell people that 
they're not okay and we're trying to find a way of uh, finding a common ground and people decide not to listen so listen please do listen if you're a manager if you're a co-worker just listen um treat people with respect please as well it doesn't matter their color it doesn't matter their ethnicity it doesn't matter where they come from yeah. and check yourself as well um i think knowing um that like we're, we're very self-conscious i think all the time on trying to be like the, the ones that do care trying to be inclusive um so and sometimes the only thing that we're actually we're actually missing is to understand where those feelings are coming from so if you're upset and you ended up saying something um, that you're not absolutely happy about it to someone that happens to be a person of color that is in that meeting uh just go there and apologize just be a decent human and listen that's it yeah that's perfect and our final question is what advice do you have for young women of color like myself who are looking to break the glass ceiling and realize their dreams okay so um advice i'm a confident builder so the first thing i would probably say will be don't wait to be confident to show up okay so show up until you are confident so go for it <laughs> fight the impulsive syndrome fight it you know ask women you know who who are in the position that you aspire to be how did they get there what did they do to uh, to get there and be committed to it and finally i would say you know find a mentor like me just joking just find a mentor, you like a mentor? <laughs> <laughs> somebody to guide you you know when you're confused to mm -hmm. help you out all right i'll leave the rest for the others i suppose uh, i'll jump in there um uh do what you're doing like grace uh volunteer for for like uh, conferences like this uh, representation representation does matter yeah. like even um not, not not even like tech like even uh, for me representation as your or dublin mayor right now with hazel chu i was over the moon when she was officially announced because yeah. she's irish born chinese like myself and she's representing a, a, a community which you know like for, for me I, I was just i never would have thought yeah that was so you can imagine you can um imagine in tech when i've seen a lot more people like myself coming on well slowly trickling yeah. but um i think definitely community for me the community of uh joining for me the python community helped me a lot it opened up a lot of doors for me when i when I start running their events back in uh, mid to like 2005 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I met a lot of people along the way and opened up so many doors and uh, to, to get the confidence, I think like what Evan said, just, you know, <laughs> just get in there. Mm -hmm. um, for me, when I ran the first Python conference, um, I was saying who's opening the conference and everyone looked at me the organized the rest of the co-organizers looked at me and said you're you're the chair I said, when did i become the chair well you're the <laughs> one doing a lot of the work right I said, yeah so i got pushed out and i just uh i was freaked i freaked out but i just oh. said okay these are all people that i sort of uh, that i know or see because they come to meetups or new people mm -hmm. and it does get a little bit easier um but the thing is yeah definitely um put yourself out there um little by little it doesn't have to be the huge thing like standing in front of 200 people talking uh but you can be something helping in the background volunteering with groups that need help um helps with the especially with events like this yeah. um you, it, you have diverse programming so different type of speakers um you, uh, you can um especially when it comes to code of conduct you have different you have different people that the people can go to if, if something yeah. does arise um and just seeing um, uh, different different diverse people out speaking, you know, about the works and their interests, you know, uh, and as I said representation just really matters. And um, yes, I think just I suppose don't don't like me, don't spend nearly one hundred percent of your time just volunteering. I think I just ended up I ended up small, and I it's to me it's like Pokemon, like just collecting different things that to join and help out in and then i just ended up creating organizations and i just couldn't stop saying yes to everything <laughs> um but you can start small set aside time and volunteer and um and then you get a bit more confidence and you'll start creating something amazing you don't you don't know like the direction because it, it happens naturally if you because only you know what's missing um mm -hmm. and um that's why there's like so many like 
um, so many like even like I've been curating a list of diversity in tech groups around Ireland. Mm -hmm. There are seventy two plus groups, um, which is bonkers to mm -hmm. me, right? Um, around thirty one of them are in Dublin. Uh, and 17 all Ireland and then there's a few like in different and then that's including um, uh, about 10 uh, kind of uh, clubs and socks right yeah. um, universities so there, there's a so when I went when we can drill down to it there is there uh, right now there's a great opportunity for people to join in or create your own um, uh, uh, to to um, help Kind of, I suppose step little steps to 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 your dreams, uh, mm -hmm. to get to that you know that dream job or uh, that dream role, all that role that never existed. You know you yeah. can create that role. You know I, I I'm in a maker advocate role, which is a weird role because it never existed before mm -hmm. until that job came out, and I, I I just you know applied I applied for it, and uh, and there's lots of different things that um, you know you can be a future advocate. You don't know uh, you could be. Um, you know, you, you can be that the future kind of uh, leader where, you know, everything in the future will be amazing. You know, we don't have all these problems and people, are, we're, we're just people and we just could carry on with our jobs. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I think for me, from a community perspective, it opened up a lot of doors for me. And if that was that one little step, so you can join in and mm -hmm. help other help others um, if there's uh, lots of different groups, especially here in Ireland and Dublin. Um, uh, things are a lot remote. A lot of things are remote now. So if just head things like head to places like a meetup, you can find a, find yeah. whatever group is there and see if they need help and join in and see what you can do and contribute. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oji. Yeah, um, I would just uh, echo what everybody has said. Really, um, look for mentors. Um, I have two mentors um, in my current uh, role that uh, they know that they're my mentors though, so that's good this time. Um, I, I have one within my team and she's great. Like I said, she's a brilliant technologist and amazing engineer. And um, I just look up to her so much and she um, she's not a woman of color, but like doesn't really mean anything because we understand each other. We can connect on things that don't have anything to do with color because at the end of the day, we're just for people um, and she's amazing. And then I do have um, a male mentor who is in America, um, also within my organization. And um, he he's black and he's just he's just great because he, he just provide a different perspective. So sometimes it's good not to have an echo chamber of the same people and the same thoughts because you learn more when you're around, you know, different yeah. types of people and different kinds of people. Um, so that's been great for me, having those two people in my corner and then being within my, my organization. It helps to, I suppose, get my name out there within the company. Um, mm -hmm. But I would also be looking for a mentor outside of the company just um, because I, I don't know if I'll be at that company forever. So it's, it's also good to expand my network beyond that. Um, definitely network um, go to events such as these um, and put yourself out there because that's how you get that's I suppose that's how you get called to speak at such events. Yeah. Um, I don't think if I if I hadn't been um, doing like the Silicon Republic article and all these other little things that kind of got my name out there, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I'd be here today. Mm -hmm. So definitely put yourself forward, step out of your comfort zone. For this, for me, this is stepping out of my comfort zone, yeah. speaking at a panel like this, and it makes it a little bit easier because it's virtual. Um, so like definitely step out of your comfort zone network. Um, one of my friends created this platform called Empowered, Empowered, Empowered Roots to kind of build up a network of STEM graduates and students within Ireland. And we're, currently we're, she's using um, Clubhouse as the platform of choice to kind of have events and speak and, um, and I suppose have different centered uh, panels. So one mm -hmm. will be on tech this evening. The other is on like biochemistry, like just the whole range. And yeah. that's a good place to kind of meet with people that are like minded and also people from around the world because Clubhouse obviously is global. So um, network, um, get in touch with um, our panelists here um, yeah. outside of the panel. Um, definitely, if, if they if you heard anything you liked and want to get more information, mm -hmm. get in touch with the organizers of such events, um, and just work hard. Um, at the end of the day, you'll have to do that anyway, <laughs> in whatever role you put your mind to. Yeah, mm -hmm. work hard, and the glass ceiling is breaking easier and easier these days. I feel so. There is like 
even though we harp on about, um, I suppose, the challenges we go through, like things are a lot better than yeah. they were even five years ago, let alone 20. So um, definitely, definitely use the resources around you. Mm -hmm. Liz? Uh, yep. Uh, so again, everyone covered, I think, pretty much everything. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so for me, what worked very well was uh, volunteering, uh, finding your community and speaking to it. Uh, so I'm part of the Coding Black Females. Uh, there is a community for Black women in, that uh, it have, goes in London. It's based in London. Um, and Charlene Hunter is the founder. Um, they have so many, there's so much stuff happening in the community. There's so many um, people that message every day saying, I want a mentor. Does anyone want to be mentored? Um, their uh, workshops, their courses, their training, their one-to-one, -one, there's so much stuff that you can do outside. Um, I mean, out there on the internet and also out of your comfort zone. Um, the other thing I would say, so um, that being said, I think that the first thing that you should actually do uh, before you think about breaking the, not necessarily before, but to align your thoughts with breaking the glass ceiling is find what you love and stick to it. Find what you want to do, what is it that you, that it makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and stick to it. And for everything that you decide to do, uh, career related make sure that that aligns with your, with your big plan uh, and be careful not to say yes to everything as well because we ended up getting into those things and we get volunteered a lot even if you don't want to do it so make sure that what you want to do aligns with the things that you, you're doing every single day because that's that's it that there's no there's no ceiling for you if that's what you do every day thank you that's awesome uh do we have time for audience questions? I think we might be eating into lunchtime now. I'm not sure. If the audience has any questions, we can maybe answer one or two. Uh, any questions? While we wait for questions, we can answer the last one, which is, oops. Uh, how can we get in touch with each of you? Is there like, do you have Twitter, anything that we can get in touch with? Uh, they can, uh, I suppose, um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Vicky Timmy Lee. I'm, I have too many accounts on Twitter to actually, <laughs> but I'll give you my personal one. Um, it's, um, W H Y W H Y K W H. I'll type it in. Yeah. That's my Twitter. Um, but yeah, if, uh, Pie Ladies Dublin has one. Um, I like, I'm in so many different groups, I, I suppose, you, when you list it out. So, um, but in, on my profile page, um, you'll have my best way to get hold of me is my LinkedIn profile, I suppose. And we can, uh, people want to chat to me about anything to do with the Irish tech community or any of the stuff I'm involved with. Um, that'd be a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, I think you're muted, Evelyn. <laughs> yeah, just search me on, on LinkedIn, Evelyn Omeyo, E V E L Y N N O M A Y O. Or I'm on, on Twitter as well. Twitter, LinkedIn. Yeah, just search my name and you get it. Yeah. Yeah, we, like we can drop it in the chat so people can copy. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I think that that's it. So, it's lunchtime now. So thank you so much for joining the panel. Thank you for talking, guys. It was really insightful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting. Thank you for having <laughs> us. Yeah, yes. yeah, and moderating. Thank you. All right. <laughs> it was nice meeting you all. Nice you. Yes. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, you too.